What's going on people? Today I am moving my lunch out the way so we can do this tutorial quick so I can get back to eating the other half of my sandwich. Um, anyways, if you're new here, my name is Jack. I upload weekly content based around video editing, videography, and how to make money making videos. Subscribe now if that sounds interesting to you. On the screen right now is Premiere, very basic you know, new composition. It just named it some random stuff, the play around project. And I'm basically just gonna be running through some shortcuts for Premiere Pro. Pretty short video. Obviously, you know, all I'm doing is just telling you a couple things to press on the keyboard that will enable you to edit faster and 100% um, have a faster composition. Some of this stuff is simple. The majority of it, I'm, I'm sure if you've been editing even for a while, you probably will, will know about some of these definitely, but also I'm pretty sure I'll tell you about a couple of them as well. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, the first shortcut to save time is uh you know the export shortcut so normal process of exporting you know you uh you know you edit up your sequence this right here is from a freelance project right so let's uh let's just chop a section out right before the actual uh presenter comes back in right so we've just got this sort of sequence or whatever you know a normal kind of process would maybe be to go over here press o to put an out point and then go up here to you know file go all the way down here to export media and then you know do whatever your media settings are for me. I use H.264, obviously, and uh, you know that that's cool. Doesn't actually take that long, but what takes far less time is Control M, aka Command M, if you're on the Mac, right? So Control M, boom, that just opens it straight up here. So instead of, you know, uh, you still got to put the out point, obviously, to register the in and out kind of section. But then instead of going up here, clicking, blah, 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 you just press Control M, and you're opening up your export settings right there. You know, I maybe only learned that. I don't know, a year ago, something like that, six months ago, who knows? I don't even remember, but I just remember that before I was doing the kind of the slower version, which is going up here, going to M. But I mean, they even tell you right there, control plus M equals the export settings. Next up is to get a dope screenshot without doing a kind of slower method. So, all right, let's go through here and let's find somewhere which would be a pretty cool screenshot. That right there would be a pretty cool screenshot, right? Say the the, the guys hit me, the, uh, the, the win this, people who I shot the video for, right, on the license plate, and they said, Jack, we want a couple promo screenshots. If I wanted to get this, the normal process before would for me be to press I and O to create kind of just like an in and out on this exact one frame, right, so the only composition is right here, and then I would go to my export settings by pressing Control M, and I would just switch the format to PNG, and then it would export only that frame because I've set the in and out point. That's cool, and that definitely works. Like that's a pretty, you know, easy process right there. But someone pointed out to me, maybe in my advanced, uh, you know, the, the massive Premiere Pro tutorial, I think someone pointed out to me that I could just go here to the little camera, and that's actually export frame. So that'll export whatever frame it is. In fact, you can set the path for me. It's a OneDrive shared screenshot so that it can appear on my laptop as well. And then, uh, you know, you can select the format, JPEG, PNG, anything you want, PMG, the highest quality, I'm gonna go with the PNG. Um, and boom, you know, you, you press export, and then if we actually go to, uh, you know, my finished projects here, but if we go to my shared screenshots, we find out that it is actually jumped here, and we've got a nice high quality screenshot that's taken from in the video, and that's just, again, going to the little camera icon here, which, again, I only found that out a few months ago when someone pointed it out in my comment section, and, you know, I built a whole Premiere Pro course uh, so, you know, even if I, even I don't know some of this stuff at the end of the day, and well, of course I don't because I'm entirely self-taught. I've made an Adobe Premiere Pro course, but I never watched one, that's for sure. So, of course, I've missed out a couple things. At the end of the day, you know, I just pick this shit up as I go along. To, to be totally real with you guys, I'm picking this shit up as I go along. Next up, in and out points. Obviously, we just uh, evidence them there, but there's certain types of projects that are really important to use in and out shots for, right? So, it's a... Uh, so let's actually go back to my footage drive, right? And let's actually get some some footage from like a, you know, we we we, we could just stick to uh we, we could just stick to the kind of car theme that we got going on, all right? So we we'll select a random clip um, of of the car footage. Obviously, you know, I keep all my shots. We bring we bring it in, whatever. Let's drag a random shot in, totally random shot. Um, first off, what we want to do is double click it, and we open it up in here in our source window, right? And then we could start playing, and we notice that this shot. Um, maybe doesn't want to start from the exact beginning, you know what I mean? So it's like they're coming around this corner. Um, that's that's actually not the best example because that literally could start from the beginning and actually be fine. Two seconds, no planning. Uh, this this is what we do right here. Um, let's just skip through a couple of things and uh, and see if we can uh, and find some some kind of decent clips or whatever, right? So awesome. One of these will work, I think, pretty well. All right, boom. So there we go. Let's drag that over. 
There we go, put it in there. Again, just an example clip. This right here is kind of shaky at the beginning, right? We wouldn't start the clip right here. So if we just dragged it into our composition, it's just gonna start at the beginning and we're just gonna have to skip along until we find a nice stable bit like that bit and then you know cut it and, and resize it and start it from there. But we can actually skip that process by simply playing the clip in our source window and waiting until I kind of you know stop shaking my hands because I'm poking my head out the window. That's how we got this shot right here. And I can press I. So that's actually gonna start from right here, which is where it's stable. And now, if I were to drag it into my sequence, we drag it in, and it's gonna start right at the actual bit, which is the bit that we want it from. So that's cool, but that's only kind of part one of this, uh, of this particular thing right here. That's the in and the out section, right? But the kind of really awesome part of this, in my opinion, is that you can actually drag the video only or the audio only. Now, the audio only doesn't apply to this because there's no audio. The clip's shot in 120 FPS slow-mo, so you know, there's no audio attached to it, but especially for a, for a uh, shot like this, um, and for a, for a video like this, rather, it's got a backing track, right? Like, here's the, uh, here's the original thing. I've muted it for this, just for the sake of it, but, you know, it's, it's, got, it's got music to it, and it's synced to the beat, right? So, essentially, we don't need the audio layer, right? So, it will be way more efficient just to click drag video only, be able to just drag the video layer in here, because if we're editing a project like this, we would already have an audio layer down here anyways, and we could then just go ahead and create press play essentially and uh, you know we, we've obviously got it in there depending on what you want to do you could maybe add a little warp stabilize on that whatever the case may be um, and uh, you know there might even be a nicer part of the clip whatever the case may be and uh, just like that you have actually uh, you know figured it out that's some Adobe Premiere Pro shortcuts hopefully a couple of those helped you out uh, if they did tell me in the comment section down below if they didn't tell me in the comment section down below I am entirely self-taught on Adobe Premiere Pro. I basically, you know, picked up everything I know from hands-on use and, um, you know, from a couple tutorials here and there and stuff like that. Uh, so, at the end of the day, tell me if I missed some shortcuts. Please inform me. I want to apply them to my next project. And, uh, you know, I almost certainly did. I only threw a couple random ones in here that I could kind of think some people might not know. But that's the end of the video, guys. If this is the first video we ever watched of mine, hands down, if you made it to the end, you probably enjoyed some aspect, which means other videos of mine you might enjoy as well. Just a theory, go check them out. Also, if you haven't seen my Adobe Premiere Pro five hour masterclass, I'm gonna link it down below in the description. Hands down the biggest tutorial I have or probably will ever make in my entire life. And it's a banger, so check it out. Thank you guys for watching, I've been Jack. Have a nice day and take it easy.